Thyristor, once quite sufficient. A popular semiconductor component designed for switching loads. The main application area for thyristors is in powerful regulators, voltage, and rectifier circuits. Nowadays, more modern triacs are used in voltage regulators, but I have prepared a separate video about them. Despite all the advantages of semi-rectifiers, thyristors have not disappeared completely since in some areas, for example, for the construction of powerful rectifiers, they are an ideal option. Today we will look at three simple but quite interesting circuits based on just one thyristor. Using the first circuit, you can build a garland powered from the mains. The circuit is very simple, but extreme caution must be exercised as it is not isolated from the mains. Adjustments should only be made after disconnecting the power cable. And during operation, under no circumstances should you touch the components of the circuit. Using several such circuits, you can build a high power garland. The thyristor and rectifier diode are selected based on the power of the load. In our case, the load will be a 100 watt incandescent lamp. The mains voltage is supplied to the circuit through the rectifier diode and the incandescent lamp. It's easy to guess that the load in this circuit is connected in series. And even if the circuit is assembled incorrectly or there are faulty components, there won't be any fireworks. Instead, the lamp will glow brightly. The electrolytic capacitor is charged through resistor R1. When the voltage on it reaches a certain value, which is sufficient to trigger the thyristor, the latter will activate and the lamp will light up. At this moment, the capacitor will discharge through the limiting resistor and the open thyristor. And theoretically, the thyristor should close. But it's not that simple. In direct current circuits, closing a thyristor is not that easy. In alternating and pulsating circuits, the thyristor will only close when the voltage passes through zero. It's the same as temporarily removing the voltage from the thyristor, only it happens naturally. In our case, it's precisely the pulsating voltage. This can be easily verified by adding an electrolytic capacitor of relatively large capacitance after the diode, which will smooth out the pulsations. A control pulse will be applied to the thyristor. It will open, but it won't be able to close. By the way, due to the use of a half-wave rectifier, our lamp will glow at half-brightness and, consequently, consume less power. By rotating the variable resistor, you can change the delay time for the thyristor to trigger, in other words, the frequency of the lamp's blinking. The frequency is also affected by the capacitance of the capacitor and the resistance of resistor R1. But I don't recommend changing it. This resistor needs to be powerful. If possible, use one rated at 3 to 5 watts. Even a 2 watt one heats up noticeably. Rectifier, diode and thyristor. It's advisable to choose ones rated at 300 to 400 volts to have a voltage margin. The thyristor in my case is made in the USSR. A 10 amp Q202 with an N index. Although there was no point in using it, it was simply available. The device is assembled on a small printed circuit board. You can download it via the link in the description along with the project's complete archive. I strongly recommend placing the circuit in a plastic case for safety before use. Based on several such circuits, adjusted to different blinking frequencies, you can build a garland of colossal power. Naturally, if you use a diode and a thyristor of the appropriate power. Simple, yet very reliable. Security devices can be built based on ordinary non-locking thyristors. The operating principle of such devices is very simple. In this circuit, an active head from an alarm system is connected to the thyristor. This head contains everything necessary within itself. It's enough to apply voltage to it, 12 volts, and it will activate, emitting unbearable sounds. The essence of the presented security device lies in a thin copper wire which can be stretched near door and window openings. The wire can be of any length, meaning it can be stretched throughout the entire house. The wire with resistor R1 forms a kind of divider. If the wire is intact, the control electrode of the thyristor is grounded and the thyristor is closed. When the wire 
Brakes and unlocking voltage is applied through resistor R1 to the control electrode of the thyristor, and as a result, it activates, triggering the alarm. Since the thyristor is non-latching and also in a direct current circuit, the thief will not be able to disable the alarm even if they are stopped by the broken wire. To close the thyristor, the voltage needs to be temporarily removed, meaning the power must be turned off and then back on, or a closing button can be added, as shown in the picture. However, this method is highly undesirable to use if a powerful power source is involved. In my case, for the experiment, a laboratory programmable power supply IPS405 from RS was used. This is a professional, stabilized power supply at 40. Volts 5 amps with a functional display. Naturally, before restarting the alarm, the wire needs to be restored if it was broken. The resistance of the limiting resistor depends on the thyristor. For powerful thyristors like the Q202, the resistor is selected within the specified range. For low power ones, the resistance will need to be increased. The power of the thyristor, again, depends on the load. In this case, the alarm consumes current. A. It is advisable to choose a thyristor with a margin. The next circuit is based on the first one. Only the wire is replaced with a photoresistor and an electrolytic capacitor is added. As a result, we get a laser alarm system. The operating principle is as follows. We direct the laser at the photoresistor. We supply power to the circuit. The thyristor is securely closed because the resistance of the photoresistor is several hundred ohms. If the laser beam is interrupted even for a short time and the photodiode is not illuminated, its resistance sharply increases to tens and even hundreds of kilo ohms. In this case, an unlocking voltage will be applied to the thyristor through resistor R1 and it will activate and remain in this state even if the photoresistor is illuminated. That's what will happen. You already understand the rest. Almost any photoresistor will do. It's important that its resistance is several hundred ohms or less when illuminated by a laser pointer. The pointer is the cheapest one. It costs next to nothing in any store. For this circuit, the choice of power source is important. You need to use constant sources with minimal output ripple. It's better to add an electrolytic capacitor to the input of the circuit. It will smooth out the power supply ripples and protect the circuit from false triggering. To reset the alarm, you need to first turn off the power, turn on the laser, aim it at the photoresistor, and then supply power to the circuit. The alarm is ready to operate a few seconds after being turned on. And with that, I can only say goodbye. As always, this was Cassianoka with you, and see you next time. Bye.